are for the night time, days are wide awake, visions are for crazy men, not me for goodness sake, but I'm seeing things. Even though this piano is used, it must be costing you. What do you say I go half? With all the ladies giving it away to whoever will pick it up. It's free. It's free? Okay, I'm going to pay for the whole thing. What else do you want me to do? Mom. Okay, I'm sorry. What I think we should do is we should put that out in the garbage. Put that out in the garbage. Clear this bookcase here and put the piano no, right uh, there. Marge, this is my chair. We're not going to put this out in the garbage. This then is my you chair. Then take it to your place if you want. I'm going to be back here eventually, all right? Put it in the basement. There's a lot of room okay, in the basement. Great. Okay, put just it in the basement. temporarily in the basement. All right. Careful now. Oh, let, let me just uh, give me five minutes to see the news, okay? John Tennant. Hey, don't, don't change that. Good evening. This is John Tennant of the Metro News. Oh. Louis, what? Why do you think I'm buying Jason a piano? So he won't watch television all the time. So? Well, you're not a very good influence on him, are you? Marge, I'm a reporter, right? I kind of watch the news on TV, don't I? Well, this is your day off, isn't it? Listen, today's TV news is tomorrow's newspaper, okay? Five minutes, just five minutes. Oh, Louis, come on. Watch it, okay? Mom. Metro's third homicide of the year was discovered at the Royal York Hotel just moments ago. Roger Collins is at the scene now with this live report. Roger. At 7 o'clock this evening, Boris Davidovich was the featured speaker at a banquet sponsored by the Canadian Jewish Confederation here in the Maple Leaf Room. An hour later, he was found beaten to death in a service corridor leading to the hotel kitchens. Does it doesn't mean I won't be able to watch TV anymore. Oh, no, that doesn't mean you won't be able to watch TV. It just means that now you'll be able to play the piano, too. Did you have a piano when you were a kid? Yeah. They're lots of fun. You like it. Did you have TV, too? Oh. We didn't have TV. No TV? Could you shut up, please? Jeez, I can't believe this. First you want more furniture, and now I, I can't talk in my own house. Come on, let's just throw this down the stairs, Jason. Come on. Davidovich had become a prominent spokesman for world Jewry after fleeing Russia several years ago and taking up residence Maybe you should go around and Excuse me, sir. Could I have your reaction to the tragedy that's just occurred? Please, uh, I, I have no comment. Thank you, Izzy. I have with me now the man who discovered Davidovich's body, Bruce Simpson, a busboy at the hotel. Bruce, could you tell us how you found the body? Yeah, like, I was just going back to the kitchen with this tray of dishes, see? And his body is lying there. It's all dead. It's lying there. I freaked out. Thank you, Bruce. This is Roger Collins at the Royal York Hotel. Uh, let me go. Oh, okay. I can't believe he's actually going to help us now. No, I, I can't help. I got to go. Okay, I got to go to that hotel. What about the chair? Uh, to take care of it. I'll, uh, I'll see you later, okay? in here in 10 minutes, I'm going to start deputizing bellhops. Sergeant, we've got someone from Interpol on the phone. Give that to the Mounties. They're not doing anything here but getting in the way. How you doing? You busy or what? Yeah. What about the bus boy? I got a hunch he's involved somehow. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I don't know. I saw him on TV. There's something about him. He looks uh, suspicious to me. Maybe it was the shape of his head. Yeah, that's it. It could be that. Or was it the way those beady little eyes were set close together? Yeah, maybe. Chacon, the department hasn't used phrenology since the turn of the century, the 18th century. Which is lucky for you. Because those beady little eyes of yours are almost touching your nose. And I wasn't even going to mention the cone on your head. Where you go? To the bus boys' house. Uh -huh. It's routine. I've got to question everybody connected with this. Oh, good. I'll go with what you bought. 
But I've only got a single, and, and I can't allow you two men to live down there together. I mean, it's not that I'm prejudiced, but the last time I allowed it, there were strange smells coming out of there, and Judy Garland records playing day and night on the record player. We're not looking for a room, ma'am. Sandra Brown, Metro, please. Oh. Who's Simpson live here? He's down in the basement. Is he there now, you think? Well, when he's not working, he's down there alone. I don't have no hanky-panky. No. It's right over there. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you, now, right? Mm. Does Bruce Simpson live here? Who? He's a blonde kid, uh, about 25 short. Not here. But the manager said he lived in the basement. Oh, downstairs. Isn't this the basement? Downstairs, this is a semi basement. Oh, semi basement. <laughs> I want you to stand back, stay quiet, and let me do my job, okay? Okay. I'll copy. It's a pen. Yeah? Sergeant Brown, Metro Police. Yeah, I told the police everything I knew down in the hotel. Yes, I know. I'm the investigating officer. I'd just like to go over this evening's events again. Okay. Sure. Well, can I come in? <laughs> yeah. Come on. This is just routine. Uh, you discovered the body, correct? Yeah, can I just finish my dinner here? Oh, yeah, please. Yeah, I discovered the body. They interviewed me about it on the television. Where was the body when you found it? It was in the service corridor next to the kitchen. Why were you there? I was coming back from the dining room. I'm a busboy there. How long have you worked at the hotel? What about four years since high school? How did you discover the body? I tripped over it. I dropped a whole tray of dishes. Did you notice anything strange? Anybody out of place? No, just the body. Nazi souvenirs. Oh, yeah? What do you do that for? For sentimental reasons. Look, I don't want to talk to you cops anymore. I know my rights. I'm not a cop. I'm a reporter. Oh. You gonna put my name in the newspaper? Yeah, maybe. And my picture? Yeah. but I think I can handle it from here. Oh, come on, huh? I found the Nazi bric a brac didn't I? Let me have an exclusive. In a couple of seconds, there'll be a reporter sitter here over here. His face is going to be on every television in the country. Look, at this moment, all I'm doing is taking him in for questioning. Alone. Right. Sergeant Brown, can we have a minute? Hey, Chico, what's happening? Sergeant, is this man a suspect in the Davidovich? Can I go back to the hotel? Did you have anything to do with the Davidovich murder? What? You can't make a statement. Are you involved? 
Robin Williams. Did you do it? Yeah. The I did it. I did it. What's your name? My name's Bruce Henson. Bruce Henson. And I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. and you shall be heard. God save the Queen. Please be seated. Arraign the accused. Please stand. Bruce Simpson, you stand charged that you did honor about the 8th day of January, 1982, at the municipality of Metropolitan Toronto in the Judicial District of York, murder in the first degree, Boris Davidovich, citizen of France. Upon this indictment, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? I admit to the execution of Boris Davidich because he was an agent Mr. of the Simpson, an agent of the international Mr. conspiracy Simpson. that threatens the white race. Mr. Simpson, this court is not interested in your shenanigans. What I am interested in is a plea of guilty or not guilty. Guilty. This court is adjourned. We will reconvene to hear submissions on sentencing three weeks from today at 10 a.m. Remove the accused. Midget bigot looking for attention. Thank you, Dr. Sigmund Chacon. Aren't you forgetting that you're the guy who fingered him? I was wrong. Oh, that's too bad. I was going to recommend to the captain that you give a seminar in Pinola. Should I say he did it? I never said he did it. Redfern, did I say he did it? I beg your pardon? He didn't do it. Uh, what's he talking about? Chacon here is a sore winner. Did, did I miss something? I told him to check with Simpson. It was my idea. Another mission? You're really getting good at this. Not particularly. He didn't do it. looking for Louis Jacome. Well, this is the place. Come on in. Excuse my outfit. I was just on my way downstairs to play some squash. Oh. A little brew, Sergeant? You read my mind. You got it. Uh, why don't you have a seat right over there? <sighs> so, do you mind telling me why you brought us all here? Okay. He didn't bring me here. I live here. Oh, it's nothing like that. No, absolutely not. Hey, are we going to make a federal case out of this? The reason I brought you both here is because I don't believe Simpson did it. Uh, I hope you don't think I'm gauche, but uh, I put ice in my beer. No, help yourself. It's in the fridge. Now, hold it here. Uh, did you hear me? My mouth was moving. I was speaking here. Did you hear me? I said that Bruce Simpson didn't do it, and I intend to write an article to that effect. I heard you, Mr. Chicago. It's a free country. You can write what you want. Have I got the right people here that I'm talking to? Aren't you the man who charged him? And, and uh, are, are, are you the lady who is the assistant crown attorney? Yes, I am. But you're not outraged, right? I'm disagreeing with the court, but you're not outraged. Can you maybe give me a little indignation? Could you muster up a little peek between the two of you? Off the record? Uh, preferably on. Off. All right, spoil sport. Off. OK, off the record. The victim was a foreign citizen internationally known. There was a lot of political pressure to make a quick arrest. So we pick up this neo-Nazi and he confesses to the media before I can get him into the station. You were there for that. Yeah, I was there and I saw a kid who would confess to killing Darcy McGee if you promised him network coverage. So what was I supposed to do? Tell the press that although the guy confessed, I'm not going to charge him because I have my doubts? Simpson insisted on acting as his own counsel and on pleading guilty. 
What was the Crown supposed to do? Refuse to proceed? Okay, so we all agree the kid didn't do it, right? That means that somebody's out there who did do it. Now, I'd like to know what you two intend to do about that, okay? Well, we are delaying the hearing on sentencing to give the police more time. So, uh, you will drop the charges of Simpson if you come up empty, of course, right? That's a difficult question. We no. may have to review the case. Don't be naive, Chacon. The guy confessed. He has a closet that looks like Hitler heaven. We spring him and John Q. Public will be down on us like a ton of bricks. Oh, that's my date. He's a bit early. I think you guys are going to have to leave. I think you're underestimating John Q. Public. Oh, you're not about to sit back and say, good work. You released a Nazi who admits to killing a Jew. Hey, May. Um, Kenny, you remember Mr. Chacon from the Toronto Gazette? Yeah, right. How's it going? I don't know, Kenny. I and, really don't know. Uh, Sergeant Brown from the Metro Police, Sergeant Brown, Kenny Volk. Hi. Sergeant Brown, uh, you're the guy that nailed that Nazi, right? Yeah. Hey, great work. Where's capital punishment now that we need it, eh? Yeah. Uh, well, it was nice meeting you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. See you later. Bye. Bye. Yeah, yeah, I know. John Q. Public. I rest my case. Roger. At 7 o'clock this evening, Boris Davidovich was the featured speaker at a banquet sponsored by the Canadian Jewish Confederation here in the Maple Leaf Room. An hour later, he was found beaten to death in a service corridor. No, I, I want the bus board. This is not the bus board. Give me the bus. It's got four. Four is there. Thank you. This is Roger Collins at the Royal York Hotel. Uh, yeah, go back. Back. It's over now. This guy's finished. Can you make up your mind? your reaction to the tragedy that has just occurred. Please, uh, I, I have no comment. But you may miss it. Go forward, right? Just go forward. You want to do it yourself? I'm sorry, you go forward, body. please. Could I have your reaction to the tragedy that has just occurred? Please, uh, I, I have no comment. Please, uh, I have no comment. Find that guy for me again, okay? What? The guy, the guy with the hat and the hair and the, and, and the beard. Get, uh, find him for me. Sir, could I have your reaction to the tragedy that just occurred? Please, uh, I have no comment. Acceptable, uh, but don't call him on the Sabbath because what? he doesn't pick up the phone. What are you, what are you talking about? It's a joke. Well, you're right. Then. Oh, yeah, because you're on the Sabbath, you don't do okay, much, right? Um, here, here's the Rebbe's office right here. Good. Okay. Hey, listen, you do me a favor. What? You come in here with me, please. Oh, sure. I feel a little, you uh, feel a little uncomfortable. Right. Okay. I, I don't want you to get any ideas from this, though. I mean, I'm, I'm already promised to somebody else. It's a joke, right? Right, yeah, okay. Um, Revy, this man would like to talk to you. What can I do for you? I hate to bother you, Rabbi, but you're the only man who can help me, I think. What's your problem? Well, it's kind of hard to explain. It's to do with uh, Boris Davidovich's murder. Oh. Yes, a uh, great tragedy. You were at the banquet. Uh, I saw your interview on TV. On I the... gave no interviews. Well, it wasn't exactly an interview. I mean, you didn't say much, but... Uh... I was upset. I had nothing more to say. Who are you? Are you with the police? No, I I'm Louis Ciccone from the Toronto Gazette. The newspapers? Yeah, but... This doesn't have anything to do with the newspapers, actually. I'm here for personal reasons. You are a Jew? Uh, no. No, I'm not Jewish. Well, why are you here? I get visions. Visions? What visions? I see.
see things that have happened before. Yeah. You okay with that? And I'll tell you what I saw. I saw... I, I ran a tape of uh, you on TV, and I, I saw visions of uh, uh, German soldiers shooting and, and killing people coming out of the woods by, by a stream with a lot of snow. I was in Europe during the war. I had such an encounter with the SS by a stream. Revy, isn't this like Chochmas Yad? Chochmas Spartzuf? Ruben, you're too young to read the Kabbalah. Well, what is that? Kabbalah is Jewish mysticism. What Reuben was referring to was knowledge of the hand and knowledge of the, not the, uh, not the face, the whole features, the look. Uh, what is that, like aura? Yeah, sort of like an aura. A young man who reads the Kabbalah can go insane. How old do you have to be? Forty. I'm almost 39. Can I take a peek? The Kabbalah is not for the uninitiated. I don't seek these visions. They just come to me, and they're always about murder. I'm sorry. I cannot help you anymore. Well, can I ask you one more question? Yeah. D did you know Boris Davidovich? I mean, were you friends, personal friends with him? No. Coney, get over here. What was your assignment for today? To follow up on the Simpson case? Follow up on the Simpson case. That means where was Simpson born? How old is he? Who are his parents? Facts. Now let's look at what you've got here. That's all in there, Max. That and a lot of other things. Bruce Simpson is the criminal tailor made for the crime, the assassin of a prominent Jew who comes complete with jack boots and swastika armband. But it could be that we're letting the glare of the brass buttons on the neo-Nazi uniform blind us to the truth. Because despite his plea of guilty, the evidence against him is just not there. Oh, you do that so nice. Would you like to replace Nolton Nash? It's all opinion. Opinions that happen to be shared by some people in the police department and some people in the Crown Attorney's office? Well, why aren't these people quoted in here? It's off the record. You've got more unnamed sources than the Pentagon Papers and Watergate combined. Off the record is out of the paper. What are you doing? You killing this story, Max? Just okay, the okay. Opinions. Excuse me for a minute, okay? What are you doing? This is going to be a letter to the editor. It's a conflict of interest. We won't print it. Who said anything about the Gazette? You're not the only paper in town, Max. Mrs. Holicky to Mark Ciccone. Oh, come and get it. It's upstairs. Upstairs. Here it is. Oh, jeez. It's a small piano. It's very sad. Very heavy. Oh, that is beautiful. That is really beautiful. I bet you're going to miss it, huh? Oh, I never learned to play it. Oh, you didn't? 25 years ago, I fell in love with that Liberace on TV. Yeah. I had the crazy idea that I played you excellent on this show. Oh, well, I don't think that's crazy. I think that's sweet. The day the piano was delivered, they canceled his show. Oh, that's too bad. Mm. Now, uh, this uh, piano's still here. Now, does that go with the piano? Oh, sure, honey. It's all yours. It's all got to go now, because I need the space. I bought a 31-inch color console. Oh, that's nice. George, my late husband, never wanted to buy color. He kept saying they'd perfect it. Like, what do you mean, Simon? You're going to kill me. Simon, what do you mean? You're going to kill me. You destroyed it, then. Simon! Excuse me. Come on, don't kill me. All right. Simon! Hey, up? Pat Cabin, oh, my. Who's that Pat? Oh, you move it all over my head. Are you crazy, you son? All right, all right. Could you tell Louie to hold up his end? Louie, hold up your end. I got my end. Can you hold up your end? Oh. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. George died in April, oh. and as soon as I got the insurance money, I went out and bought this 
31 inch Magnavox. Mm -hmm. Bavarian oak console, remote control, <laughs> zoom option, and a Peter Max. <laughs> it's a state of the art. <laughs> oh, yes, I it's think very George nice. You're going nice. to love it, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. I do. Well, uh, I guess I'll be going now. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. Neither. Look, 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 please. This, this is not going to fit in. No, wait, it's pop, not going pop. to fit in, please. Listen, you've got to take out the bread racks. You cannot take out the bread racks. They're bolted in. Well, uh, well, I think you should angle it then. Angle it more. No, no, look, Marge, we angle angled it. it. We moved it to the right. We moved it to the left. Look, the only thing you haven't done is put it on the roof. Well, put it on the roof. Go on. Put it on the roof. Wait a minute. I have a great idea. Can we put the piano back down? Just put it back down. Up. Yes, right there. I watch. Wait. All right. All right. Where are you going? Bob, where are you going? I'm going to get Moskowitz's truck. What are we going to do? Mind the piano. Hurry up, all right? Hurry up. Get some coffee. Start meeting like this, Marge. Yeah, of all the gin joints in the world, I gotta pick this one, right? It's just like old times, huh? Me, you, the moonlight, and chopsticks. Hey, you know something, Lou? I miss you sometimes. Oh, I can move back in. See, you know, every time we start having a good time, right away you gotta talk about moving back in, getting together. I just wish that you'd enjoy the moment, you know? Just relax and enjoy it. the moment, eh? Yeah. So why don't we change the subject and talk about reconciliation? Uh, oh, oh, the moment's back, right? You got the smile, the moment's back. Mr. Giacconi, your father's just called, and he says he can't get the truck till tomorrow. Oh. Thank you, dear. What are we gonna do? You cover the top, come on. This one forward. Forward this one. And you press that one for backward. That one back. And if you want that tape over there, you press here. That tape over here, here. That's it. I got it. Right forward, backward, right. Right. Okay. Now I really got to go now. Okay. I still got to mop the washrooms. Right. Thank you, dear. Forward, backwards. Forward, backwards, right. Hey. You got it. Bye bye. I have no comment. And I hope the authorities will allow me to travel and talk freely. David Dalvich. Please, I, I, I have no comment. I wonder. So you can tell where people are from just by the way they talk, right? Mr. Ciccioni, every word falls from the lips as a coin drops from the mold at the mint, clearly cut and stamped. Unga, 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 unga. That's better. Kind of like a science, eh? No, it is not kind of like a science. It is a science. Legal authorities consider the voice as useful for identity purposes as a fingerprint. Is that precise? It is so precise, one can identify the Peruvian Indians from the lower gorge of the Oramba River between Rosalina and the mouth of the Timpa merely by how they whisper. Those on the right bank whisper effusively, those on the left bank whisper implosively. If it's so easy with the Peruvians, how come you can't tell me where my guys are from? One of the two voices you asked me to compare said precisely, please, please, I have no comment. Five words. How many words you need? Fifty. I could place that voice in fifty words. Fifty? There isn't another linguist in the country who could do it in less than 65. Okay, I get you 50 words. You tell me where these two guys are from, right? You were raised in the west side of Toronto. You're second generation Canadian. Your parents are of Italian and Polish extraction, and you have no more than a high school education. I'm Japanese, Oxford educated. Oh, Mr. Ciccioli. Right on, Doc. 
Your origins would be less apparent if you spoke more on the lips and less in the back of the mouth. Thank you very much. Catch you later. Hey, how you doing? Grab my rug? You have the nerve to come here after you wrote this? What are you talking about? It's a letter to the editor. You are El Ciccone, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, well, you didn't tell me you were a Nazi sympathizer. A Nazi sympathizer? Yeah, now, do you want to leave quietly or do you want to be thrown out? Hey, did you suspend free speech around here? Will you please let me explain? Hey, come on. Come on. You read what this man wrote? Yes, but all he wants is the truth. Yeah, but if you read between the lines, what Ruben, does he really say? Ruben, sometimes in your zeal to read between the lines, you forget to read the lines themselves. Come. <laughs> It's getting a little uh, tense down there for a minute. Mm. Passion often overrides the reason. Right. Especially in the young. Yeah. Uh, can I interview you on the record this time about what happened the other night? Please, I have no comment. Well, I, I got that already. I mean, I know that. Uh, look, Rabbi, a neo-Nazi is accused of killing a prominent Jew. Now, surely you've got some kind of uh, statement you could make, some kind of uh, attitude towards the whole thing? There were hundreds of people at that banquet, many people to ask questions. I'm sure the Jewish community does not lack for a spokesman, so why me? Uh, the vision, remember? Uh, I have a class to teach. Uh, Rabbi, can I ask you just one more thing? Uh, uh, yes. Which way is the washroom? Is it right or is it left? Right. It's right. Did you say right? Right, Mr. Ciccone. Ciccone. Right, Mr. Ciccone. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Mr. Ciccone. Right. Uh, Ciccone. Right, Mr. Ciccone. Thank you, Rabbi. Well? Well, that's only 46 words, Mr. Ciccone. Oh, come on. 4650. What's the difference? Mm. All right. I'm not averse to a challenge. 46 words. And there were hundreds of people at that banquet. Many people to ask questions. Mm. I'm sure the Jewish community what? does not. I am the first emigre yes. to be allowed back what? into the East Coast yes. on a mission for world Jewry. What? I expect Did you notice the similarity of the very slight rising inflection of the two men? Yes. Yeah. And how about the emphasis on the penultimate syllables? And the guttural G. Very slight, but there. Most linguists would miss that. Yeah, I bet they would. No doubt about it. There is a marked similarity. So? So? So are these guys from the same area or not? Oh, of course. The speech pattern is that of the general population of the carpatho ruthenian region of pre-war Czechoslovakia. I'd say within 30, probably 20 miles of Rashiv. Rashiv. Very impressive, Professor. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to commit myself to a more specific location without hearing the dialect of Yiddish spoken by the two. Yiddish is important? Oh, indeed. It's in the Yiddish that we can hear who these people really were. An altogether distinct branch of Orthodox Jewry in East Europe. Orthodox, you mean like uh, Hasidic? Yes, they could be. You told me that they were both Jewish and approximately the same age, and most definitely two separate people. I'd say it's quite possible that they could be cousins. Cousins? Hmm? Certainly from the same community. I don't believe this. It is quite impressive, if I do say so. And remember, you only brought me 46 words, Mr. Ciccone. Incidentally, it's Ciccone. Hmm? Ciccone? Ciccone? Mm-hmm. But it was Ciccone. expect that piano to be in this neighborhood overnight. That's your problem, Pop. You got no faith in human nature. Well, if it is, it's going to be in a thousand pieces. Oh, I'll be damned. You see, you got to have faith in human nature. Yes. <laughs> so, wait, let's go. <laughs> Louis, I don't believe it. I really, I don't believe it. Touch the piano, unless you'd like to see your life hanging by a thread right before your very eyes. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's all right. It's only my father, all right? All right. Send your wenches. Who the hell is that? Wait, by the way, the middle seat's a little flat. And you got a feather in your mustache? Wait. Thank you, babe. Anytime. See you later. Come on, Pop. We gotta move. I don't understand your French. I don't what? know why you couldn't have got Jason an accordion. Then you get one of these things. Good luck, he's not an author. So I uh, made a tape of you, and I brought it to a linguist. And he says that both of you come from uh, uh, some mountain range called uh, uh, Carpathio Ruthenian Mountains in Czechoslovakia. I am from that area, yeah. Yeah, well, well he says that you're, uh, you, you're within 20 miles of a town, the both of you, called R Rakiv? Rachiv. Rachiv, that's it. Your expert is very good. Uh, my village is located just outside of uh, Rachiv. Right, well, uh, excuse can... me, excuse me. All right, you? Yeah. yeah. No. All right. How come you said you didn't know Boris David Downey? Chief is not Toronto. In the mountains, if someone comes from 20 miles away, they might just as well live on the other side of the moon. Yeah. Now, excuse me, I have this great work to do. Yeah, but you see, I'll please leave me alone. Somewhere we can talk. Yeah. It's in here. Rabbi Levitan, this is uh, Mullen Bede, our food editor. Can I speak to you for a minute, Mullen? Excuse me, Rabbi. If you think I can come up with two sets of dishes, you're crazy. No, no, no. I just want to borrow you off this for a little while, okay, Mullen? It's very important. Of course, absolutely. Make yourself at home. Why, Rabbi? Forty years ago, I knew Boris Davidovich by another name. You mind if I? our village was located high in the mountains. The war came late to us, and then one day, refugees came to tell us a troop of SS soldiers were coming up the valley. They were collecting Jews, taking them away. One of the partisans contacted someone from our village. He said they would help us to escape over the mountains at night. We would hide in the forest and move from one underground group to another until we reached the coast where we would board boats for Sweden. Our entire village, 73 men, women, children. We left at dusk, took only what each of us could carry. I carried my 
be your old brother, Chaim, on my shoulder. He was laughing. For him, it was an adventure. We walked all night. A partisan friend went ahead to find a place for us to hide during the day. Just before dawn, we came out of the forest onto a narrow mountain road. It's a by a stream with a lot of snow, right? You have an extraordinary gift, Mr. Ciccone. A partisan friend was waiting for us. Only now he was Major Zemba in his SS uniform. He gave the order, his men shot. My friends, my cousins, my parents, my little brother, Chaim. I was shot but not killed. A grave had already been dug for us. They threw us in and covered us with dirt. I don't know how long I was there, unconscious. When I came to, I dug my way out, crawling over bodies, hands, faces. My God. It was night again. I escaped into the forest and from. I survived. So this this guy, this uh, this partisan Major Zemba, he was really David Davidovich, right? Yeah. Forty years later, I saw him again up on that platform with the Star of David behind him, again pretending to be a Jew. Why? Why? To lie, to steal, to spy. Who knows why? So you confronted him in, in, in the car right after his speech? Uh, I waited for him in the car door. Not knowing what I was going to do, he came. I said, Zemba. He froze. Major Zemba, I accuse you of crimes against humanity. believe you. You can do nothing to me. Get out of my way. He pushed me, started to leave. I felt the bullets again. I saw the uniforms, the dead bodies, my little brother laughing. I raised my arm. That is when I killed him. That's it. The story stops here. What are you doing? The story stops here. It's over with. That's it. Forget it. You don't understand. I am going to the police. Why? I killed a man. You're for damn good reason. I had passion, not reason. You had total justification for what you did. I am guilty. Technically. Maybe technically. No. Morally. Ethically, absolutely. Hey, listen, Rabbi, you... An innocent man is in jail for a crime he did not commit. He's a slimy little racist who got his rocks off by confessing to a crime he didn't commit. Now, he wants the credit, let him, let him have it, okay? He deserves it. Perhaps you are letting the glare of the brass buttons on the Nazi uniform blind you to the truth. When I wrote that, I didn't know the whole story. Uh, you wrote the truth. I must surrender. Look, the man killed your family, the whole village, so you killed him. That's only human. The Nazis were human. The only hope for mankind is to try to act more than human.
this down, okay? When I say go, you go, just go with this. Boom, 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 boom. All right, that one doesn't work too good, so do this here. Okay, hold on. Wait a minute, Marge. Wait. So, we will now play the tune for which I am primarily known. A one, and a two, and a three, go. <laughs> I'm hoping and wishing that the next apparition is the sight of you welcoming me home. It's hard enough living without having visions to the left and the right of you. They won't leave me alone. Give me a cold, hard fact. I'm, I'm seeing things. things. 